So Google Gemini has been announced, a large language model competitor to chat GPT-4. Up until now, of course, they've had Bard, which isn't that great, as we've probably all experienced by now. But this is going to be the new language model that powers Bard um, versus Palm 2, which is what they have at the moment. And um, it does look pretty incredible. I would say it's kind of a real competitor to ChatGPT and GPT-4's uh, multimodal capability. But uh, what I think they're saying is different about this is not only does it beat GPT-4's very best model by just a little bit on all of the different tests that um, took place with this model, it also, because it's been designed together and not as separate like DALI, Code Interpreter, and then, you know, GPT-4 regular for doing content and everything else, it works better together. It's kind of a seamless brain. And they do explain that in their videos and how it all works together seamlessly. And there's a lot of different videos to look at here. I'm going to put a link to this underneath this video so you can go and have a little look. But one thing to note is that uh, there are three versions of Google's Gemini. One is the Ultra. Let me just scroll down. There you go. The Ultra. Then there's the Pro and the Nano. So Ultra being their most capable, amazing one. And that is the one that is being compared to GPT-4 in all of the examples here. But it is not available yet. That is going out to selective development people and partners next year. The one that will be available first and in Bard even now apparently is this one is the Pro version. And that one it says there is uh, our best model for scaling across a wide, wide range of tasks. Does it doesn't go into too much detail about what capabilities Ultra has over Pro, but Ultra is the one that they're demonstrating and talking about here. So bear that in mind when you look at all these examples. You might not be able to get hold of this tech uh, for a little while yet. And actually, when I went to Bard, and I think uh, just here, here we go, I asked the question, are you using Gemini Pro now to power your answers? And it said, no, I'm not using Gemini Pro to power my answers. It also said that uh, Gemini Pro is a die cutting and embossing machine that is used to create intricate designs on paper and other materials. So I'm thinking that maybe it's not uploaded, at least for me, but you might want to go and check and maybe ask that same question to your bard if you have it. So uh, look out for it in bard soon. But the demonstrations, and I think, you know, some of these demos here were actually incredible. And I'm just going to show you some of them so you can really kind of see what a big deal this Gemini is. So let's go to the video now and I'll show you a few of these things that impress me the most. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black or white. Can you imagine how this is going to affect the education industry and the future of education at schools and everything with this level of AI helping and assisting people with their works for children. It's just going to be incredible. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high level tone. Oh, okay. 
Crazy, crazy. So it's able to now uh, become a language tutor and recognize how you say something to it and how good uh, or how well you've pronounced that particular word in that language. So again, for the education industry, this is just going to be uh, crazy good, crazy good. Now, the other thing that impressed me the most was uh, probably these visual puzzles and making connections. So let me jump forward to that. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth. A dog. Sweet. The coin should be under the right hand. Hmm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. It did use a pretty good sleight of hand technique because I didn't see it move over there, so that looked pretty good. But it's incredible how it's watching and just it knows what's going on all the time. And again, with this making connections, I think you're going to be really surprised what it's capable of here. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? But look how quick it can generate images as well. It's ridiculous. If this is in real time, um, and this is the Ultra model, so we know that this is the best one they have, but wow, we've got some crazy things coming our way, don't we? Now let's take a quick look at uh, logic and spatial uh, reasoning. Mate. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. <laughs> Smart choice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No, the correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on just just going back to just going back to that dot to dot, I think what it must have done is actually read all of the numbers on that sheet and literally in its mind, join them all up together to then display that crab. That's the only logical way that I can see that it would do it. Or it just went bang and just joined up every dot. And then it saw the picture of what it was before it was even done. Now that is just, again, mind-blowing stuff here. Mind-blowing. Now, on their design, um, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun. The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Oh, I love that. Uh, let's have a quick look at uh, translating visuals. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. <laughs> Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? Alright, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. Change it up with some beachy vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice! What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. Jeez, isn't it crazy? Isn't it actually crazy? Now let's try cultural understanding with it now. 
What movie are they oh, acting Okay, out? so we'd already moved on to that. So there was a good example of that with the Matrix scene. But its ability to recognize that from just seeing it happen means that it must have seen the original content of the Matrix to understand and then just link those two together. I mean, where are we going with this stuff? If you like this, then press like on the video and let's talk more about uh, Google Gemini. As I said, it basically has announced that it is the best model at the moment compared to the best offering that's out there in the public um, with OpenAI's GPT. And it's saying that in December the 4th, or 13th, we can start building with the Gemini models. So um, we're able to connect with Google's AI studio and start using the models. But it will not be that ultra because, as I said, I've read that that is going to be to select partners as of next year. So a little while there. Um, I'm just going to try and find on here the there they go. Here's all of the different tests. The MMLU test, which seems to be one of the most popular benchmarks to use. It's saying that Ultra scored 90% versus GPT-4V, their, their top of the range uh, large language model, 86.4. Then in reasoning, it's kind of on par, really. Uh, on uh, Hella Swag, which is common sense reasoning for everyday tasks, GPT-4 still wins by quite a significant amount there, actually. And then it's saying that it's a little bit better at maths and also uh, better at code by a, a, quite a distance, 7% thereabouts, uh, Python code generation. So, you know, again, some pretty impressive stats here. And it just highlights all of them down here and everything in blue there. Um, apart, actually, no, not this one, but most things there. It has beaten GPT-4. So that's what it's saying. But again, bear in mind, this is the ultra version, but exciting things to come from Google. And now we do have a genuine, uh, really good, solid competitor uh, to OpenAI's GPT. And by the way, if you are interested in GPT then and all of the large language models, you need to come and join uh, my free group, which has got 8.4 thousand members in at the time of doing this video. It's free. Just come along and join in. And everybody in here is basically an AI nut and uh, thoroughly interested in the topic of large language models and AI. And we're always talking about it, sharing prompts, sharing latest developments and new tech. So if that's you, the link is underneath this video. Just go ahead and just join. As I say, it's completely free. So that's a quick rundown of Google's new Gemini large language model. Looks exciting, very powerful, and uh, hopefully going to appear in Bard very soon. It may already be in your Bard. So go and take a little look and see and ask it the question, are you using uh, Gemini Pro to power your speech and your answers? And that's it for this video. If you like this, then uh, please do press that like and subscribe button and look out for another video coming to you in just a second. Thanks for watching.